The 30th of April 2024, this is on Helen McEntee. Uh, I had an earlier one, I revised it a bit, there was a few, a few inaccuracies in it and it was a bit too long. So uh, this is more or less the same thing, just, just slightly amended. Now folks, um, uh, Helen McEntee was elected, she's a member of a long-term Fine Gael family on both sides of her parentage. And they were farming type people and teachers and all that sort of stuff. And I know all of them well, so it's a bit delicate for me. I wouldn't touch the subject with a barge pole on account of me being in the area, but not in my electoral area. Only for the, 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 this is such a war, only for we're in the middle of a war and I have to treat her as the enemy in that war. Now, one of the things about her is, you know, we had two, well, first of all, I'll say this, she's an ordinary country girl, went to school uh, and all of that and grew up and you can't expect her to be an expert any more than none of my children were experts at that age until they get a bit of a grip on the world. But she had a problem and uh, she's the daughter of the, of the late um, uh, TD, uh, Shane McEntee, and he had a problem. And the same problem afflicts any of these politicians. They're members of Fine Gael. And the Fine Gael that they were members of years ago is no longer the Fine Gael. The Fine Gael party now is in the total control of the EU, of the uh, United States Democratic Party, of the World Economic Forum, of uh, George Soros, of all of these New world type people who believe in massive globalization and all of this green junk and all of this stuff. And they have among them brought the economies of America and Europe and Britain and indeed Ireland to its knees by penalizing people for getting up and doing a day's work and using the only thing that's available to make wealth and that is fossil fuel. And they have penalized that so they've ruined the economies of Germany, France and everywhere else. Not only that, the rest of the world is slowly waking up to them and I attribute that to this medium here, the internet video. They're looking at it all over, they're looking at the whole place and countries like Russia and Iran are, 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 are learning stuff about the, about the West that they'd never find out otherwise. Anyway, it's a good thing. Openness is a good thing. Now, the thing about her is she didn't have to go mad woke. She could have went slightly protesting and said, well, I'm Minister for Justice and I'm going to do my own thing. Not a hope. She was on the radio the other day and she was talking about the law and order and she says, the Gardaí tell me what to do. I consult the Gardaí. And the Garda Commissioner, in all fairness to him, is woke, unfortunately. And he has stuffed the whole Garda headquarters with Northern Ireland PSNI senior officers so that no guard can get promoted. And this all is a result of the corruption in the south of Ireland, in the Republic, which led to the the Morris McCabe uh, and, 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 the, and the whistleblower, John Wilson and all that. All of that has led to this, where the Fine Gael went from having every trust in their own appointments of the guards to having no confidence in the original guards at all. And so the best of good guards are linguishing down as, as the sergeants and inspectors, down in the shires, down in the country, down in the towns, and they cannot get up. All's taken from abroad, more or less. And all has to be mad woke and all of this. And as a result, we now see a war between the unfortunate guards, very few who agree with this, in places like Newtown, Mount Kennedy, in places like, like, like uh, other parts of the country where there is uh, trouble in the East Wall and protests all over the place. Now, this is what she's pushing and she tried to push the hate speech. Uh, they know it's highly unpopular but only for the referendum results, they would still be pushing the hate speech law. And it would probably become law. And when you consider that a so-called sensible fee to fall politicians, Willie O'Dea voted for it and then regretted it, not knowing what he voted for. That tells you how it's so important for people like myself and others to try and alert uh, the people what's going on, when they don't even know what they're doing themselves. Uh, and 
and I think they're actually watching my videos. But one of the re one of the revelations that came out on Gripped and Gripped Media is an excellent website. Uh, one of them is that in the referendum, the Attorney General, the highest law officer in the state, and several senior civil servants who aren't given now for being on my side, but several of them pointed out the obvious, which was also pointed out publicly by Michael McDowell, he's a senator, which was also pointed out that if you change the, start the name of marriage from having a marriage certificate, a piece of paper like this, to something to do with a durable relationship, and also being a carer and having been a carer, that if you had one person here from abroad, we'd say it's Afghanistan, we'd say it's Somalia, Eritrea or whatever, and they get in here on a sympathy vote and they say they're homosexual and they are being oppressed in their own countries. And in Uganda, you can get a prison sentence for being a homosexual if you're practicing it. And in, 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 in Madagascar, they passed similar legislation. So all you have to say is, I'm gay, that's it. In you come, you get your full documentation, and then you can say, oh, I have a lover out in Madagascar. See, durable relationship, I've been in a relationship with him. And then he can come, and he can bring his, his granny, who he says that he's caring for. Now, this was pointed out by the Attorney General, by the civil servants. And yet, Helen McEntee went on public media and said that the referendum if passed would have no impact on migration. And that was a deliberate lie, a deliberate lie. Heather Humphreys, who was charged with selling the, 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 the two referendums to the Irish people, she's Captain Monaghan uh, Minister for Fine Gael, went round pushing it and she never said it either. So here we have the Minister for Justice telling a deliberate lie against the wishes of the Attorney General, two or three senior civil servants, Michael McDowell, who's a barrister of law, just to get it passed so that the, her Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, who is also gay, oh, wonderful, he's gay, so that he can go and signal a way off. Oh, look at us. Oh, we're after passing progressive legislation. How in the name of God will the people of Nover approach her next trip to the polls? The people of Nover are not like that. They never believed the like would happen. And now she believes in this. Helen McEntee is now trying to claim that the migrants are all coming in from the north, which is a lie. There is some of them coming in, but not as many as that. She loves the idea of migrants. She wants every vacant building at a time when it's very hard to sell a vacant building. So if you have an office block, people are working from home and the value of, of vacant offices is going down. She wants them all converted into migrant centres. Thousands and thousands and thousands. She's built a new, she's involved, well, she's promoted a new secondary school in Nover, a lovely job. <coughs> and the equals buildings are going to house for migrants. Meanwhile, in Gaza, there's enough migrants, there's enough potential migrants in Gaza to fill Ireland three or four times. They're not let out. So this whole thing about persecuted people and per special protection and then criminalizing the native Irish for pointing out this is surely the greatest act of treachery ever committed on our country. The British, as bad as they are, would never have done this. And somebody came after me there for saying Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Oh no, that's ours up there. The Northern Ireland. Don't mention that. Just say the six counties. Look at. Look at. We are better off. I'm an Ulster and I'm an Ulster man. I, you wouldn't have this happening in Northern Ireland. It's there. There's woke in it, no doubt. There's windmills in it. And there's cash fresh. But don't lecture to me about Northern Ireland or anywhere else. This is happening by our own Fine Gael party. And that's what Helen McEntee is doing. 
and the only way to handle her is at the next election get her out. Now I am told from a lot of people that the government is running scared, that the referendum scared the daylights out of them. Certainly I'd say there's still about 20% of the party faithful who voted no to both referendums who would leave those parties. There'll still be a hardcore who for various reasons will still vote for the likes of Helen McEntee. But hopefully there will be alternatives. And my only advice is anybody but the government, they're talking now of there being up to 40 independent TDs in the next doll. That's not enough. Unfortunately, we don't have one solid party. I wouldn't worry about it. And someone also posted underneath, oh Val, it's all right saying you're against the government. Uh, you have to put policies, you have to put a programme for government. No, you don't. You do not have to do any such thing. You can have the government a caretaker or you can do what you like. Just leave it alone. Stop the immigration immediately by whatever means are successful. They put the Gardaí back on the border like they were at the time of the Good Friday Agreement when they put hundreds of Gardaí. They put them on there for the BSC and the foot and mouth disease. Ring the border if you have to. And then shut off the airports and the sea and find a way of dealing with it. That is, to Helen McIndee, the most horrible thing you could say. That would be like some woman saying you're taking her newborn baby away. That's how well that they are and how indoctrinated these deluded representatives of the mugs. And I understand why the people of Nobber didn't uh, vote it for her. But I will not understand if they do it again. The place for Helen McIndee is working in a school or somewhere else or in a restaurant or something else. She is not fit to be Minister for Justice. She is not fit to be appointing judges. Not fit at all. And it grieves me to have to say that. But the truth has to be told. This is a war between the survival of our Irish nation and what these people are pushing on it and the destruction they've already wrought. Hard to say that. I don't do it easily. And I'm glad to have it done. But she's in the limelight. She's in the limelight at the, at the minute. They're saying she must go. That Simon Harris that they appointed, he's appointed by uh, Hogan. What do you call him? Bill, um, Phil Hogan gave him his blessing. He was a tea maker for uh, uh, Francis Fitzgerald. Nothing between the years. I think, he, as far as I can see, he's an airhead. Just the same as Veranca was an airhead. Helen McEntee, if she went out around her own constituency, would be very soon told the reality. And the sense I get from the people there and everywhere I go at funerals, at wakes and everything like that and weddings and all that and in the mart is the sense of helplessness by ordinary Irish people who don't know what to make of this. And all I can do as somebody who has the best interests of my country at heart and somebody who has a bit of common sense is try and set the, the framework, not, not seesaw, or not pendulum, not all woke, not all right wing, that there is a centre and a centre right as we had it gone by, where you had the working people, where you had the civil service, you had a bit of a safety net with dole and that for people who are less well off and all of that type of thing. And you did not give the wealth of your country away they seem to look at what we earn every year and find a way to get rid of it. They can't so well put up taxes, although they're doing that, so they're loaded on the electricity bill and given BlackRock developments a grip on our electricity. And they were given that, the same to Irish water and everything we have. That's the reality, folks. If you're wondering what happened, if you're one of the many people who say to me, I just, I just give up, I, I, I just can't understand this and it's just such a disaster. All I can say to you is the first thing when you're in a hole is stop digging it. Get rid of Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil, the Labour Party, the Greens and Sinn Féin. They have enough without us. 
put the voters in a big pool over there, let them plough along and eat each other up like pigs cramped in, 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 in a sty. Let them eat their own tails and let us, even their only independence, we can form some kind of a thing, we can do something to try and just say to them, no, no, we're not back in this. Or stop a migration. The whole green energy ends. The carbon tax ends. And and that's one of the things about the man I'm supporting uh, for now, Herman Kelly and the Irish Freedom Party. And there's an uh, independent Ireland party as well. And there will be candidates there if people will support them. The most treacherous thing any Irish person will do in the next election is vote for those people. If Sinn Féin thinks differently, time you spoke to me. I want to sit down with Mary Lou Macdonald and put these questions to her. I'll wait a long time. I'll wait a long time. They're just Fianna Fáil with the border. That's all they are. Folks, Helen McEntee, her, 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 her term has been a massive failure. It wasn't an easy thing to do, but in everyone's life there comes a time when you have to stand up for what's right and what's wrong. And she has rode in totally for what is wrong in Ireland. You don't listen to the Garda Commissioner. You hear him. You ask him on problems there are. It's your constituency you, you are responsible to. Your constituents. If the constituents have, a, have a, an opinion which is good and decent and the Garda Commissioner has a different one, then you've got to tell the Garda Commissioner you can't do that. The Garda Commissioner is responsible for the policing of the country in a non-political way. He's not supposed to get involved in politics and he's doing it. And the Garda should be appointed from within the force as much as possible with a little here and there just for a wee bit of involvement of northern politicians. But that's my point. She's a failure. It's the most distressful thing which has gone on in Utah and Kennedy. And if she got her way, she'd have me and a lot of us all in jail. That's when she would be happy. And if it's otherwise, she better get on to me. I want to interview her. Of course, she won't do that. Folks, that's it. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We'll see you back soon.